Hello and welcome to the Bible in Depth. This is a program that focuses on the Word of God. We study from Genesis to Revelation and try to understand the Word of God together. Now, we finished the book of Genesis and we have been doing all the chapters. We concluded all the 50 chapters of Genesis and you sent your questions that we need to answer. And in these episodes, we shall be handling your questions with different panels that come to discuss with us. And today on the program, I'm blessed to have two good friends of mine. One of them is Ian Entale. He's a youth minister. He's also a software engineer with Payroll Consults Africa. He's married and has one beautiful daughter. And the other guest on the program is Marvin B. Inzika. He's a commercial analyst at Hema Cement. He's a married man. He's also a youth minister. And these two are actually brothers by blood, not yeah. just yeah. by Christ. True. Yes. Welcome to the program, Ian. Thank you very much. It's good, good to have you. you. Thank you. Very much. Welcome to the program, Marvin. Thank you, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Mm. I'm deeply honored to be here yeah. uh, to just add a brick on to the work you're already doing. Yes. Yeah. How are you, Ian? Very good, very good. Thanks for having us here. You all look fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems you're eating good things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have our friends who've been listening mm. through the podcast in the entire book of Genesis yeah. that have sent questions to us. And I would want us to try and help. We may not be able to give them everything in detail, mm. but we'll try and answer sure, the questions sure, they give sure. us. Yes. One of them asked, mm. when does someone know that they need to repent or that they've done wrong? Mm -hmm. Is there, is it, is seen crystal clear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at all times or I'll start with you. Wow. Well, thank you very much. That's an interesting question. Yes. And uh, I think mostly looking through Genesis, you will uh, mm -hmm. look at uh, the Genesis of sin. Yes. And how sin came into the world. Yes. And uh, the fact that, uh, as you were explaining in the podcast, that God gave us free will. Yes. And uh, through that free will, you know, uh, the, 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 when we read Genesis chapter 3 and what happened with uh, how the serpent, yes. the devil passed through the serpent to introduce sin, mm -hmm. then we can know that, uh, you know, the, the, the sin then was put on us uh, yes. by Adam. Mm -hmm. And in that, you know, we have that sinful nature. And later on, Paul talks about it mm -hmm. in the Bible, how the sinful nature brings out sin. Yeah. And then uh, we, we cannot... Uh, run away from the fact that sin came into the world. Yes. So when we talk about sin, uh, when to know yeah. that we have sinned, mm. it is a combination of different things. Mm. Because inside us, God has put a conscience. There's a conscience within. Mm. Yes. Mm. And later on, we see in the Bible, Paul talks about a seared conscience. What a is conscience, a seared conscience? A conscience that is inclined towards the wrong thing. Mm. Seared conscience. Seared conscience. That is quite some English. <laughs> <laughs> so seared is yeah. a conscience that is inclined towards wrong. And mm. I'll give you an example. Yeah. During the time of, uh, of, of Noah in the Bible, you'll find that the mm. Bible says that people continually mm. were thinking toward evil. Mm. Yes. And, and that would have been the result of that because as God gives us a conscience and a free will, mm. he lets us choose between right and wrong mm. yes. because of that that came through the knowledge of good yes. and yes. evil. Yes. Now, how do you know that? Mm. Of course, that is something that comes from that knowledge of good and evil. So are you saying that someone feels it from the inside? Mm. It is within. That have sinned. It is within. Actually, you see mm. later in James chapter 4, verse 17, yeah. where he says that if you know what is good and you don't do it, then it is sin. Mm. Yeah. So inside you there's the knowledge of yeah. what is good. Yes. And if you do not do what you know is good. So is everyone born with that knowledge, Marvin? Yes, everyone is born with that knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, it is very interesting because I'm a father yeah. and um, I actually look at my little boy <laughs> yes. uh, now. And um, every time my little boy does something wrong, and uh, my, my wife always attests to this. Yeah. He comes and first hugs my wife just so that. <laughs> <laughs> so already he has a knowledge of. Already he has a knowledge that he has done something wrong. Yes. Um, so 
we all have that conscience. Um, just also to add on to what Ian is saying. Yeah. Yes. Um, when you look at Genesis 39, uh, it, it introduces us to Joseph as a slave in yeah. Potiphar's house. Yeah. Yes. And um, obviously there are so many advances by the wife, come lie with me, come, you know, come sleep with me. Yeah. But Joseph has a statement he makes. I think this is verse 9. Mm-hmm. He mentions that why your, your, your boss has put everything in my possession except you. So why, why should I sleep with you? It would be a sin against yes, God. Yes. You know, you, you need to realize that this is before even the commandments came in. This is before, um, you know, the Ten Commandments came the in. Do not steal, do not hear the tablets. Yeah. So even before the commandments come, even before the there commandments is a conscience. Come, there conscience. is a conscience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joseph, within him, had been raised to know the difference between right and wrong. Yeah. And you've got to realize that uh, the, in, in Hebrew, the word sin is just merely to disobey. Yeah. Yes. That is it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Disobey. Disobey. So in each one of us is a certain moral authority yeah. mm-hmm. that if you go against it, if you disobey, yeah. it is sin. Yeah. Wow. So it is very crystal clear. Joseph actually mentions it to her and it's, uh, it was quite a revelation to me yeah. Yeah. when you even talked about it in the podcast yeah. that he mentioned it even before the commandments yeah, were brought, the, the tablets were brought. Mm-hmm. He had this relationship with God where he knew the difference between right and wrong mm-hmm. and if he was to sin with her, mm-hmm. so if he was to sleep with her, it would be sin. Yeah. So sin does not, beca- does not start in Exodus where the laws are out. No. It is in the conscience already. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you think? Because some say, I have not known that I've sinned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's, a, that's, that's an interesting, uh, interesting way to look at it. Because mostly, mm-hmm. as, you will, uh, as you will see mostly in our life right now, mm-hmm. there is a certain way that we have defined sin. Of yes, course. and how is yeah? that? And, and we, have, we have the things that we say are right and wrong, mm-hmm. basing on what we have de- de- defined in our in our head so we'll say this is right this is right this is wrong and some people will even go ahead to say i have not seen in a couple of weeks just because there's something in their head that (laughs) defines so they create a they have their like check checklist exactly that this today i have ended the day in perfect shape exactly so in that then it, it comes to the question that they were asking yeah how do I know that I have seen? There are actually some gray areas that we have in our lives. And, and I think this is something we can discuss. Yeah. Is there a way that we can sin without knowing? Mm. Unintentional sin. Exactly. Unintentional. Yeah. And then can that sin be held against us? When it's unintentional. So when we are talking that you have a conscience yeah. within you, mm. and if you have this conscience, mm. can't the conscience communicate that sin before we categorize it as unintentional? Yeah. That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Genesis obviously also opens up, uh, you know, very many avenues of answers to this question. Mm-hmm. You realize that when God comes and uh, is looking for Adam after he has sinned, Adam mm-hmm. is hiding. Yes. So um, the, the question is, um, do, do we subconsciously, even if we say that we've not sinned, do we yeah. subconsciously react in such a way that we, we, we show that we, we, have, show sinned. That we have sinned yeah, yeah. because uh, we, you know Adam hides mm. probably this is not what he wanted yeah. but he hides because subconsciously he knows that he has done something wrong he has disobeyed yeah. yes. okay yeah. so um, it, it's ve- it's very uh, and it, it's something we can always debate about but yeah. it's very rare that you cannot know that you've sinned yeah. or disobeyed. You, you will feel it. You will, you will feel it. Most definitely. And you cannot say that I do not have. Yes. Wow. Now, what, what are your thoughts? Because the issue of sin is subject to a lot of debate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah? And we see men like... We see men like Abraham. Mm-hmm. We see Isaac lying. Mm. For example, yeah, yeah. to Abimelech yeah. about their wives. This is not <laughs> my wife. Mm. This is my sister. Yeah, sure. Did they have that conscience yeah. at that point, or they were just looking at safety of life in the moment? And can you categorize that as sin? Yeah. Because we see many times when we say 
Ah, you see, when the patriarchs lied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a leeway yeah. to do whatever I want. Yeah. Is okay. there a point where the conscience can be excused yeah. for you right. to act in your own means for your self-defense? I'll, I'll give an example. Uh, mostly during this time, because I was discussing with someone uh, recently, and they were telling me, uh, when we go, I can go to the club, Yes. Yeah. but just to hang out. Just to chill, Just to sit, sit. There, look at the, wrong, you know, how the place looks. Exactly, I'm taking water, soda. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoying. Mm. There's, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing. I'm doing. And that see show. how people dance. The yeah. new dance strokes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So in that, in that, in that event, like you're saying that if Abraham lied, I think it's very interesting that the Bible still highlights the faults mm. of the patriots. Yes. Just to show us that there were people like us. Mm, exactly. That that is sin. And the things that we do as gray areas, for example, if someone said, I'm going to the club to preach. Yes. Is it right? Is it wrong? Mm. It's a gray area. Yes. If someone said, I, I'm, I'm going to take alcohol, but not to get drunk, but just to socialize. It's a gray area. Is it right? Is it wrong? Mm. And And... Then it comes to the question, okay, if the spirit convicts us of sin, mm. is the spirit leading you toward what you're doing? Oh, wow. So it all depends on, is it the spirit of God exactly. mm. leading you to do what you're mm. doing? Yes. Is the spirit telling you to go to the club? Yes. Is the spirit encouraging you to take the alcohol? Yes. Is the Holy Spirit, because the, the Bible says that everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Great discussion there. <laughs> we'll take a short break and then we'll come back with some of the questions you've sent. On the evening before its destruction, two angels arrived in Sodom. As they entered through its gateway, Lot approached them. Many of the ancient cities had gateways and these were of great significance to their communities. City gateways were usually arched overhead with gates that were always guarded. These were large, massive, and two lived compromising of heavy timber plated with iron. These gates were built to resist any pressure from the outside. Their locks were huge of strong iron and their long-handled heavy keys were carried by the keepers of the gate in their belts or hung from a nail in their little rooms close by. Benches were fixed on each side of the entrance and were often occupied by guards who lived in rooms opening upon the porch. This porch was the favorite hangout of the citizens, especially those of the wealthier class. They were attracted here by the cool breeze that came in through the shaded gateway and diverted by the humans and animals that passed by. There was a cafe nearby where they would drink as they discussed the events of the day. At the gateway, an officer of customs took his stand and thrust his sharp iron spike into snacks of gram or other merchandise with which the camels were laden in search of illegal imports. Also, the judges and governor often transferred their most important business to this spot. Civil and criminal cases were often tried here and decided. In patriarchal times, when the art of writing was little known and no title deeds secured to a man the possession of his real estate, important transactions such as purchases of land or the decision of claims took place at the city gate at an hour of the day when many influential citizens were assembled. They therefore became witnesses of these transactions. City gates were closed at sunset, and some of them contained in one of their folds a small door which was left open for an hour or more to accommodate foot passengers accidentally delayed outside the walls or in the town. Animals had to remain outside, and late travelers were forced to camp outside the walls till sunrise. The two angels made it in time before sunset to carry out their mission of destroying this city which had been judged because of its wickedness. Welcome back to the show. I'm still with Ian and Marvin, the Blood Brothers. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we've been handling some of the questions now. 
Yeah. Someone asks, yeah. and they are wondering, yeah. can someone serve God yeah. with just their actions yeah. and not necessarily have their heart yeah. or soul or body in yeah. this yeah. process of serving Him? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, the Bible says, yes. as Jesus said, that love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yes. Yes, and love your neighbors as you love yourself. Mm. I think we try to dwell on that uh, when, when I'll try to dwell on that when answering this question, yeah. because there's a reason Jesus puts all those four yes. together. He puts your heart, heart soul, soul, mind, mind and, and strength. strength. Wow. Mm. All the four, because yes. there's a reason each of them comes into play. Mm. We see people that used all their fa- uh, faculties, and I'll try to use Genesis yes. because that's what we've been studying. Yes. Uh, when when the Bible says that Enoch walked with God until he was no more. Enoch walked with God until he was no more. <laughs> the process of walking. <laughs> mm. Mm. That process of walking with God. What is that process? Mm. Yes. How do we reach the process where we walk with God until we are no more? Mm. Can you walk without strength? Can uh-huh. you walk without your heart? Without mm. your heart, without your mind, without your soul. Yes. And then remember later on in the Bible, God tells Abraham, and I think you highlighted this in the podcast, that walk before me and be blameless. Yes. Now these are two different things. Mm. Enoch walks with God yes. and it's more like communion. Yes. He is using all his faculties, his mind, his heart, his soul, his mm. strength. Until God said, you know what? Mm. You but are literally in God. On what you've mentioned, yeah. it is also on one end. Mm. Yeah. Can, the question is, can you walk with God with only your actions and not mm. your heart? Mm. Yeah. But there is also, can you walk with God with only mm. your heart or your <laughs> mind, but not with action? Yeah. Mm. Because when God is telling Abraham, walk with me and be blameless, mm. Abraham has just tried something. Yeah, of to gain offspring yes. mm. by means of her. Yes. Yes. Yet he had received a promise mm. from God. From God. Yes. So we, re- we see when he got the promise, he believed the promise. Yeah. Yes. But then he took an action. He took mm. so. Yeah. So you isolate one yeah. yes. from the other. So I think it's also two ways. Yeah. Sometimes you give action yeah. and you don't put yourself, your mm. heart in it. Mm. Or you give the heart mm. and don't you give your action. Yeah. yeah. What, what's interesting um, with what you've mentioned, yeah. actually, after that, um, Abra- Abram mm. becomes Abraham. Yes. Okay. Uh, so there is a there is a sequence of events that happens. Um, there is um, you know a covenant that's made between God and uh, and Abraham. Yes. And um, he's just basically laying it down for him that, look, um, I want to make um, a nation through you. Mm. Uh, you need to believe. You need to. You, you need to actually have faith in me. Mm. And um, we we actually see in Hebrews eleven that the Bible says that his faith was counted unto him as yes. right. as righteousness. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the the truth is, our actions may not be a reflection of our faith in God. Can you say that again? Our actions, <laughs> yes. our good deeds may not be a reflection of our faith in God. So you can have good deeds, yes. yet you have no faith exactly. in God. Exactly. Mm. And we need to understand that mm. faith is the most important element. So good deeds can be good intentions, yes. but not rooted in faith. Exactly. Okay. Can you yeah. give an example of such a man? Yeah. Mm, okay. In general life. Yeah. <laughs> you paint for us a picture of such a man mm. who wakes up in the morning, goes out. Uh huh. Mm. Okay, so I'll, I'll give an example of let me say there's a man called John. Um, mm. He wakes up every morning. He yes. doesn't want to do anything bad or wrong to anyone. Mm. Um, so he has established a sequence in, in, you know, in his life. If I find a beggar, I'll give him 100, 200 shillings. Yes. If I find, um, if I find uh, someone who needs food, I'll probably buy the food and bring it to them. Okay, yes. and it's just good morals. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but when you have an interaction with him on, you know, what is behind this generosity, what is behind this good morals, mm. he will he will not have any, you know, a, any confession of faith in God or any confession of faith in a higher power. Yes, all he does is, you know, for me, um, it's just right for me to, you know, to be a good person and to be someone who's honorable in society. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Mm. Yeah, so, so, um, uh, so in, in that scenario then, we need to ask ourselves, is that really enough? 
because you've talked about Enoch who walked with God until he was normal. Yeah. Yeah. We need to understand that um, Abraham's faith came after he believed God. Yeah. That's the sequence, you know. Um, Ephesians talk, talks about us being saved by faith, you know. Um, not by, you know, we're not saved by works, yeah. but by yeah. faith through God. Yeah. Uh, so that we will fulfill the good deeds that were destined for us yeah. to yeah. do beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. these good deeds come after your faith in God. They yeah. come after you've engaged God at, a, you know, at a level of heart. Mm of soul, of mind, you yeah. get it? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be the sequence of events for each one of us. Mm -hmm. I would also probably just highlight uh, David, the man that's talked about as being a, you know, a man after God's own heart, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. um, Samuel comes to anoint uh, Eli's sons. Yes. And Eli, uh, you know, brings Eliab, the eldest son. And someone's like, this is the guy. This is the guy anointed. This is the guy who's going to, you know, serve. He looks good. For he it. looks good, you know. Yeah. He's well built. He's... Yeah. Yeah. But the Bible says, um, God talked to Samuel and told him, no, I've rejected him. Mm. He's not the right person. Yes. I'm looking... You look at outward appearance. I look at the heart. Yes. Mm. That word there again, heart. Yes. You get it? Um Jesus is talking to this, uh, this woman at the well, and the woman is pointing at a temple and says, that's where they worship. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, a time is coming when people will have to worship God in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. So what that word spirit. What drives that good act from that man called John you've mm -hmm. described to us? Mm -hmm. Is it in conscience? Where is it that drives the good works? Is it in born? Is it because they're in the image of God, then it comes natural or? It, it could be conscious, mm -hmm. okay? It could be that he has seen an example yeah. laid before yeah. him by yeah. his parents, yes. um, but he has never asked beyond mm -hmm. that example, yeah. okay? Yeah. Or it could be that he just wants to do good. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. that, that is what is in him. He wants to do good. And, and obviously now the question is, how does God look at such a man, yeah. you know? Um, God's blessings are for us all. Yeah. Yes. When when it rains, it pours even at the shrine. <laughs> you know, yes. God God blesses all of us. But the promise is for those who have received His Son. Yes. The yes. ultimate promise. Yeah. You yeah. know that Esau was blessed. Yeah. Yes. But Jacob received the ultimate promise yes. that salvation will come through his lineage. Yeah. It's the same thing. Mm. You cannot come to God and you have an interface or an interaction or a relationship with God, mm -hmm. okay, without believing that he is, okay, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is Hebrews uh, 11, mm -hmm. uh, verse 6, you need to first believe, without faith it's impossible to please God. So those who come to him have to believe that he is, he is first. Yeah. Yeah. Then he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek yeah. him, yeah. okay? Yeah. So you cannot believe on him without engaging your spirit, your soul, your mind, and obviously your, your, your strength. Yeah, yeah. Now, we, we get cases for somebody who believes yeah. in God, but then says, my works are not the issue. I have belief in God, yeah. I have faith in God, yeah, yeah. but then the actions, yeah. all the good deeds miss. Yeah. Mm. Where does this person lie? Yeah. Oh, what trouble do we land in? Or do we even land in any trouble? Right. So, uh, 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 the Bible talks about faith without works being dead. Yes. So, you can have faith and have no works, and that will be dead faith. So, we have a scenario here. Yeah. Good works, no faith. Yeah. Yes. Faith, faith no, works. no works. Then we have works, works and no faith. faith. Yes. Yeah. yes. Now, I'll, I'll just draw you to a scripture uh, where Jesus is saying, Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, yes. mm. that you do to me. Mm. When we get saved or when we receive this faith in Jesus Christ, yeah. it does not only stop at just having that faith. Yeah. He expects us to translate that faith into works which will transform the world, yeah. Mm. Yeah. which will transform the communities around us. Otherwise, mm. that faith is dead. Yes. And so he's saying, you know what? You saw some people who were sick and you did not... Uh, uh, minister to them. Mm. You saw some people in prison, you did not do anything for them. Yeah. 
Therefore, you, your faith is actually dead. You did mm. not do anything with that faith. Mm. And there's, if you have the fruits of the Spirit within you, mm. love, joy, peace, they patience, have to all those together. things have to come through. So mm. faith and works cannot be separated. Yes, exactly. You yes. cannot rely on one and forget the other. I would say this. Um, mm. Without works, you are not going to lead any to Christ. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about Christ at the end of the day. Yeah. This is him. It's, it's like you you're, you're preaching him. to somebody. Yes. And then you abuse the one in the back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. You you're being selfish. Yes. yes. As a Christian, yeah. God has given you this great gift yes. of his son. Yeah. You're believing in him and you're seeing his revelation in your life. You're seeing the good things he's doing in your life yeah. and you don't want anyone else to get to be a part of that. Exactly. You get you so are selfish with Jesus. Exactly. Mm. Our yes. works need to come to the front because they need to preach who God is. Yeah. They need to preach who Jesus is. Yeah. Yes. You know. Yeah. People will see Jesus mm. in you after your works. Yeah. Yes. Not after what you say. Yeah. You know, yes. someone once uh, mentioned something so profound that sometimes we are the only Bible like anyone will ever read. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just about what you say. It's actually... So your faith just, yeah. and your works yes. yeah. are very important. Just, just imagine Jesus mm. preaching without doing any works. <laughs> that have been disastrous. <laughs> How would that have been? Terrible. Yes. So faith without works is dead. Your faith has to match your works. Yeah, yes. That is all we have had today. We shall continue next time. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Okay. Now, for those that have not listened to the podcasts, you can please subscribe to the links on your screen. You can also go on any podcast platforms and you just put Bible in depth. You'll be able to receive all the podcasts for the book of Genesis. There are 50 chapters we've handled and 35 episodes. Yeah. Go and study and listen and know the Bible by yourself. Sometimes we just let the church or the Sunday service speak to us, but we need to read the Bible yeah. as Christians if we are to grow. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. We'll catch you next time. God bless you. Lord, you are So precious than silver, Lord, you are so costly than gold, Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, nothing I desire. Sing a yone zabu. Oh, sing a amainja agomuedo. Mokama. Oh, sing a yone feza. Tewali no. Sing a yonesabu Mukama O sing a feza O sing a Amainja Gomuendo Tewali no mu Oh, oh, oh.